Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing uh, Podcast. We are back with another episode of Quick Hits. Uh, we're going to get into Keyshawn Davis' lackluster performance against Francisco Patera. Um, not real good from Keyshawn. I mean, he won, he dominated, but we'll get into it. Before, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day. 8 to 10 minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, please follow us uh, also at Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Um, all proceeds from that channel go to autism research and recovery. Um, all right. Keyshawn Davis has been talking quite a bit. He's had things to say to um, Andy Cruz, um, Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield, uh, Frank Martin, and then he got his chance. All the other young bucks, young studs <clears throat> at uh, 135 in, in just an absolutely loaded division. Um, he got his chance to shine. He got his chance to make a statement. And to be honest with you, it was just eh. It was just okay. Uh, there was nothing spectacular about his performance. And he's not ready for prime time. Um, he's not ready for the Andy Cruz, I think, would still beat him. And he's got a lot to say to Andy Cruz. Andy Cruz's performance was just okay. Andy Cruz's performance was, was just okay. I agree. It was better than yours. Fought a better opponent and handled him better. I'm not knocking Keyshawn. I like Keyshawn. I'm just saying he's not ready for prime time. I, I, I noticed a lot of things. Um, so, I mean, it's a lot of one punch at a time. He's got to throw more in combination. That's not going to fly at the highest level. He, he's got to throw more in combination. He's got a real bad habit when he throws the right hand, when he leads with it specifically, but when he throws it in general, he keeps it real low. He is waiting to be countered. When he goes to the body, watch his jab and then his lead right hand to the body. He leaves himself so wide open to be hit. You can't do that against good fighters. Like You just can't do that. You're going to get tagged, right? Like the, the, the little jab to the body, and, and he just stays there, right? He keeps it there. That's not doing much, right? I'm just going to take it and counter it. Like the same thing with the right hand. Like he's going to get nailed with a looping right hand. He just leaves himself so wide open. It's got to be more combination. He's got to be able to step on the gas. Like he had Patera, an outmatched fighter, an opponent in trouble in the eighth. He's obviously got pretty good pop, right? That, that, that counter right hand, he hit him up. Bang, perfect shot. Put him down. Finish him. He's been outmatched. He's hurt. Just get rid of him. Why, why, why? I Explain to me why he didn't get rid of him. Because he doesn't have the killer instinct. Because he's not there yet. And I'm, look, he's 24. He's the same age as Devin Haney. I, I understand he's got a lot, lot less pro fights, but he's got a ton of amateur experience. Andy Cruz has one pro fight, and he's already better than Keyshawn Davis. Um, I'm going to make a tweet about that later, too. Check that out, 3D Boxing uh, blog on, on Twitter. Andy Cruz is still better than, than, than Keyshawn Davis. And I wasn't overly impressed with Keisha, with, with um, Andy Cruz. You know, Floyd Schofield might be able to beat him. And I don't know what you guys think of Kid Austin, but he might be able to beat um, um, Keyshawn. Keyshawn's not there yet. He's there's a lot of things. He's got great ability. He's lightning fast. He's got good reflexes. He's got good fundamentals for the most part, right? His footwork is good. You're not going to catch him sleeping. Like, he, but there's got to be more in combinations. There's way too much one punch at a time. He's got to be able to finish people when they're hurt. Um, his performance was lackluster. I would say, you know, you got Cruz, uh, you had Schofield, and Keyshawn. I would say Keyshawn's performance was the worst. Of the three. 
I'm going to be fair, he probably did face the best opponent, to be fair, to be completely fair, although, you know, there's not much that uh, separates those three guys. Um, they're all kind of the same level. Um, well, you know, if, if those three guys fought in a tournament, you know, you, 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 you'd probably pick Patera to win. Patera's got some decent wins. Um, but the Keyshawn, but when you talk that much, and I like Keyshawn, I want Keyshawn. If you go back to MCR podcast and you said, who's the next door of boxing? And this is during the pandemic. I picked Keyshawn Davis. I like Keyshawn. I, I, I hope him, I wish him well. He's just not there yet. Uh, and that performance, and I, I, I want to talk about Bo Mack. Everyone want to say Bo Mack is his great trainer. Who besides Terrence Crawford has he done a great job with? Hooker? Jamal Herring? Who has he made so much better? Seriously, I'm, I'm not knocking Bo Mack, but who has he made so much? Who, who did he take to the next level? He ain't doing it with Keyshawn. He didn't do it with Hooker. I, I mean, tell me. Really, let me know. What, what great job is Bo Mack doing outside of – this is the same as Virgil Hunter. There's so many trainers like this. Yes, they, they, they take one fighter, and they do a great job with that one fighter. What else has he done? What other fighter has he elevated? Just say he's Terrence Crawford. Great, good, fantastic. He's done an excellent job with Terrence Crawford. What else has he done? Not much. I like Bo Mack. I met him. He's a good dude. I'm just saying, like, he's not, like, so he, he, he he's not Robert Garcia. He's not Bob Sanders. He's not taking fighters and, and elevating them to, an, to the next level. He's not Emmanuel Stewart. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm going to go to um, Bo Mack and get fixed. It's not happening. It's not happening. Um, but, I, you know, we're going to see the, the fight tomorrow. Um I mean, on, on Saturday, we're going to see Spence and Crawford, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm into it. I'm psyched for that fight. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, how would you rate Keyshawn's performance? Did you see the same flaws I do? He's, he's he's hittable. He's not thrown in combinations. He's not finished. He should have finished them. Like, he gave himself a C-plus or a B-minus. I'd give him a C-plus. You know, I think, I think he's getting himself a fair grade there. Um, he's, he's capable of more. He's capable of more, and he's got to clean some things up. If he's going to be fighting, like I said, he's already the same age as Devin Haney. He, he's several years older. I think Schofield's 20. He's four years older than, than, than Kid Austin. I understand he hasn't had tough fights, but he's got the amateur experience. Um, and, and if somebody wants to run their mouth that way, the way that he does, you got to back it up better than what you just did. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blogger, all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. It is July 24th, 2023, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.